Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Leela Rhodes and I'll be your moderator today. Thank you so much for joining us here at Netcom Learning, a market leader in promoting lifelong learning, training and talent development solutions. We are very excited to host today's webinar, Unlock the Potential of Simulation with Autodesk Fusion 360. Presenting today's topic is Anil Chahan. And Anil has over 10 years of experience in the domain of industrial designing, training, and operations in the design and engineering industry. Anil's expertise is in conducting skill development programs on latest Autodesk product and technology. Anil has delivered multiple sessions as a CAD and CAE trainer for AutoCAD, Revit Architecture, Revit Structure, Creo Elements, CATIA, SOLIDWORKS, STAAD Pro, and Inventor Professional. Now, please bear in mind that this is a overview of a very robust topic, but we do offer a collection of technical and business courses that can be tailored towards your specific requirements. So if you're interested in a further discussion about any of those, you can make an appointment with our learning consultants through our website at www.netcomlearning.com. Netcom Learning helps customers build innovative learning organizations by achieving a smarter workforce, adapting to change, and driving growth. We do this with a broad catalog of offerings, developing customized learning plans, and our global delivery capabilities. Since 1998, we have been empowering organizations with our managed learning services to help them reach optimal performance results and address challenges. We have nine practice areas in which we specialize, and they encompass people, process and technology training. Today's presentation is from the design and multimedia practice area. Netcom Learning offers a comprehensive training portfolio for design and multimedia courses, and our upcoming classes include various trainings on Autodesk Fusion, AutoCAD 2022, and many more. Private training to teams is also available, and those learning plans can be customized to the specific needs of that audience. You can also access a variety of multimedia marketing assets, such as the free on-demand training and blogs, by clicking on the available webinar handout. And these offerings can also be found with a simple search on our website at www.netcomlearning.com. In this webinar, we will learn about the types of simulation you can perform in Fusion 360, and the webinar will also talk about how to simplify geometry for the simulation. And now I'm going to go ahead and pass the time over to Anil to present today's topic. Hi, everyone. Good morning. So as Lila has already introduced me, so we can directly jump into the presentation. OK, so here we are going to discuss about the uh, simulations available in Autodesk Fusion 360. So uh, this is the agenda for the day, as you can see. Uh, we will discuss about the type of simulations you can perform in Fusion 360 and uh, you will understand how to explore the geometry in Fusion 360. If you just want to uh, like uh, simplify the geometry in simulation environment, not in the modeling environment, you can do that. And uh, uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, the static stress analysis uh, like briefly, and then we will take a dive into the simulation workspace, understand how to use any CAD files uh, with Fusion 360. So, Let's start. So first of all, uh, we have the simulation. So that is a finite element analysis, as, as you can see. So a uh, finite element analysis is a simulation of any given uh, physical phenomena. So and uh, we can use uh, like uh, like if you want to optimize, if you just want to analyze any part uh, with the help of analysis. So this uh, flexi this environment gives us the flexibility to analyze to optimize our part and uh, uh, just uh, to like analyze before any prototype or uh, before making any physical uh, component so that uh, we can uh, save the cost and uh, uh, we can save a lot of time with help of simulation and this thing is available in the fusion 360 as well and uh, fusion 360 offers uh, like much more than cad design including a different kind of uh, simulations so uh, ca tool have become like essential part of any engineering design processes now these days and uh, simulation tools allows designers, engineers to predict up 
parts performance digitally prior to any physical prototyping or fabrications so it's becoming more common these days for uh, programs to combine cad cam and ca tools all in one platform and that's what uh, like uh, the autodesk fusion 360 does so besides its 3d modeling capabilities it brings cam and uh, ca tools as a uh, core functionalities next we have the types of simulations as you can see uh, in this slide so these are the different uh, types available in the uh, fusion 360 though we have many type of simulations available but these are the things which we can do with help of the uh, fusion so first as you can see we are just going to uh, have a brief look about all these simulation studies available in fusion 360 first one is a static stress so you can see uh, it's just a brief introduction about static stress static stress assumes the relationship between the applied load and uh, its structural uh, responses is linear and the material follows elastic behavior right and uh, we can perform this analysis in fusion 360 and next we have the model frequency this is another type of uh, simulation available in fusion 360 so model frequency analysis are used to determine the dynamic properties of a system and uh, to identify its uh, resonant frequencies so some frequencies can cause elements to sing as well uh, as engineers natural frequencies analysis or model frequency analysis of plant structures or building is important to avoid the disasters so this is also important topic uh, in the fusion and next one is the electronic schooling uh, so this is uh, they have just introduced uh, this type of this study in fusion 360 so electronic schooling is a tool that allows you to visualize the temperature and uh, air movements within electronics assemblies which we can do in the fusion 360 and the target audience uh, uh, like uh, for fusion 360 users for this tool is someone that uh, that would like to predict the temperature of their electronics components and uh, see the air movement in their designs and there is there is no need to have prior simulation experience as well because this is really easy with the help of fusion 360 you just need to uh, follow the procedure and you can perform this type of uh, simulation uh, analysis in fusion 360 and here next one is a thermal analysis so thermal analysis is like uh, if you just want to check the effect of the temperature on the body so you can perform this type of uh, analysis which is also available in, in fusion 360 so actually we have a uh, uh, see where in this we have thermal analysis and thermal stress analysis so this is the combination of stresses and temperature analysis which we can perform in uh, fusion 360 right so here you can see determine temperature and stress distributions both on the model resulting from both thermal and stresses and uh, next one is the structural buckling so this is also uh, one of the important uh, factor or we can say that the important type of simulation available so structural buckling uh, it's uh, uh, like this is determining the buckling load based on a fully elastic buckling assumptions uh, it is assumed that all the materials are below yield stress regardless of the magnitude of the buckling load a high buckling load factor does not uh, necessarily mean that a structure is safe so uh, like uh, if your design have members in compression uh, buckling is an important failure criteria to test for uh, even if a static stress study determines that your model won't come close to yielding they could fail due to the due to this phenomena so this is because buckling failure is not necessarily a function of stress but one of instability so that's why we perform the uh, structural buckling analysis and this is also uh, in fusion 360 and next one is the non-linear static stress so uh, this is uh, we can say that opposite to the linear or a static stress analysis so a non-linear analysis is like uh, in which um, uh, we are going to uh, include the stiffness uh, matrices. So a non-linear analysis is an analysis uh, where a non-linear relation holds between uh, applied forces and displacements. So non-linear effects can originate from geometrical non-linearity, that is a large deformations, or a material uh, non-linearity, that is uh, elastic, uh, elastoplastic materials and contact so these effects results in a stiffness matrix which is uh, not constant during the uh, load application so which uh, we can perform in fusion and the next is here you can see there is event simulation 
So event simulation is also uh, one of the best study uh, simulation available in uh, Fusion 360. And this is used to understand like how parts respond to motion, impacts and uh, cyclic loads. It also allows uh, the user to investigate multi-body interactions such as uh, those in assemblies right so uh, the result uh, will detail displacement stresses and uh, strains um, experimented by all parts affected and next is the shape optimization so this uh, i would say uh, the best thing to lighten uh, the parts which uh, you can uh, use in fusion 360 so uh, this is also known as the topology optimization uh, and there is one more thing available in fusion 360 related to that which is a uh, generative design so uh, while such tools rely heavily on simulations the fact is that there are more like design aid tools these are not kind of a simulation well this is simulation but uh, more of a design aid that provide geometrical solutions instead of numerical results for performance analysis and uh, so uh, these uh, these were the different uh, studies available in fusion 360 and next is uh, simplifying geometry in fusion 360 so uh, few, uh, it's it's really a cool thing in fusion 360 which you can uh, uh, which you can perform while using the uh, simulation workbench of Fusion 360. So you will use simplification uh, to change the features and components. You can add the features, you can uh, remove the features uh, while doing the simulation to, uh, to have the different result from the studies. So we will discuss this in Fusion 360. And uh, now let us understand the simulation workspace and the static stress uh, study in Fusion 360. So I'm taking you to the environment in Fusion 360 environment where you can uh, see all these things. And uh, we will understand how to use any CAD files in Fusion 360 uh, along with that. And as of now, uh, one study is already opened there. Uh, let me uh, uh, brief you about the environment. You are in the simulation environment of the Fusion 360. But if not, let me just change the environment first. I'm just going to change the environment to design. So which is the by default environment when you are going to open this uh, tool, right? And to enter into the simulation uh, environment, it's really cool, it's really easy. You just need to click on the drop down here. You can see uh, this is the main environment of the software. And uh, here we have the ribbon. From ribbon, you can switch into the different tools available. We have solid tools, surface, sheet metal, and uh, tools. So right now you are in the design workbench where you can design the object you can uh, add operations right and you can see the browser here and browser is really uh, we can say that the history or uh, by using uh, this thing you can control the visibility of the things uh, related to uh, the component the reference geometries and anything like you want to hide any sketches any solids any uh, reference geometries planes datum geometries you can do all those things from the uh, browser available here so you can see uh, all these buttons you just need to click on it to show and hide right um, and here you can see the history the number of operations used uh, uh, which 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 has been used to complete this uh, part right so anyways right now we are in the design and if you want to do the simulation study you just need to click on the drop down here and when you click on the drop down you will find design generative design so these are the different environments available in fusion 360 so here we are going to uh, select simulation to enter into the simulation environment right and you will see the studies if if uh, there is uh, like uh, studies are already defined it will show you the studies here otherwise you can create the new study so let me just tell you about the study which which is already there in the uh, design right you can see here in the project uh, browser so this is a simulation and uh, these are the components uh, main components of this assembly main components base one color color two and pin you can just expand by just by clicking on this button right and here we have the study and in the study we have few uh, things which we need to do like uh, there are some steps so uh, if you just want to check the result as of now for this study you can check it here but as you can see if you are getting this type of mark that means there is a problem with the study so what you need to do uh, you just need to check where is the problem right so you can see there is a problem with the results so what can i do uh, i just need to solve it again and when you are solving the study, it will always give you two options, uh, which is available in Fusion 360, that is on cloud and locally. Like if you want to use the Autodesk server, then you can just hit the on cloud option. Or if you want to uh, solve this study locally, here we have the local option, 
right but uh, make sure that uh, you have the uh, sufficient cloud credit uh, credits uh, only then you can perform the on cloud uh, study as you can see right now i have five cloud credits so i can uh, use these five credits to solve the studies on autodesk server right otherwise you can use the local uh, server like uh, your own machines uh, to solve this study so you just click on local and then just hit solve and it will take some time as you can see the message here just click on it it will show you the studies just hang on it will take a moment and now you can see the study right so this is the result and here you can see let me just place it another corner and here you can see from the legend area right now it's just showing you the stresses and makes minimum and maximum so these are the results from the existing study and if you want to change the results you can change like you want to check check the safety factor right you want to uh, check the displacements reaction forces strain and uh, contact pressure so this way you can just check it and now if you want to do this study so we can do that let us start the new study now so that you can understand how to do this static stress analysis in fusion 360 step by step so just click on the finished results and now i need to create a study so you can just click on the study when you are going to click on a new study that is new simulation button so it will give you this dialog box where you can define like which type of uh, analysis uh, the simulation study you want to perform in this software so here we have static stress model frequencies all these types available right so uh, let's uh, do this one static stress just click on the create study and after that here you can see uh, another study has been created that is study to static stress if you want to uh, rename it you can just select it first a click to select it and then again click to define the name so this is study to static stress static stress to enter now you can see the name of that study has been changed and now uh, by default when you are creating anything in fusion 360 software it will take the material as uh, steel but in case if you want to change the material you can so you can change the physical material of the component while designing the component otherwise if you want to do it here in the simulation environment you can do that so here in the ribbon area you can see study and then well we will do this later simplification first we will do the uh, simulation as uh, uh, as per the given criteria like with all these features and then we will change the feature uh, to have the different result from the simulation study so first you can just click on the material and then study material and uh, material properties you can see so you can just click on the study material and then it will give you the material dialog box here where you can see this is metal aluminium component study material and safety factor right so if you want to change like any material so you can do that so for that this is the material library where you can see all libraries fusion 360 additive material library nonlinear library and material library right you can just ex, uh, expand the properties so this is material aluminium and now suppose you need to change it so you can just click on see study material click on the edit button and when you click on edit now here you can see we have the same as model same as model same as model right so in case uh, these are the materials already assigned in the a modeling environment if you want to change the material here you just need to click on this button so uh, for metal aluminium this is the base one just click on this button and here define the material which you want to apply uh, to this part to the base part so you can change it here anyways i'm not going to change let it be so this is aluminium steel steel and steel right in uh, in case you want to change it you can change from here then hit ok and after applying the material and all next option is to define the uh, constraints because if you want to do the simulation you want to apply the forces on this component uh, this is important that the, our part should be fixed from one side only then we can check the reaction and the uh, stresses on this component the forces so for that 
after material here we have the constraints so you can apply all these uh, commands you can use these tools directly from the uh, ribbon otherwise you can use a browser here see study material you can click on the edit button similarly we have the load cases where you can apply the load cases and here we have a you can expand it and when you're going to expand it you will find two options inside load cases that is loads and constraints right so you can directly apply the loads and constraints from a browser otherwise you can use the ribbon area so click on the drop down and choose the type of the constraint you want to apply bolt connector rigid body connector and structural constraints so uh, we are going to use this one c is a shortcut just click on structural constraint and i need to fix this part from uh, this area right so suppose i'm going to bolt this component with other component so uh, let's just define the fixed uh connection the fixed constraint here on along with all these four holes where we are going to bolt it with other part right and here you can see target i have selected the four faces and axes i have uh, like constraint all the axes that is x axis y axis and z axis uh, if you want to define any degree of freedom in x uh, in any axis like x y or z you can just uncheck from here right and you can see unlock sign is there that means um, this is free in x axis now, but anyways, I just want to fix it in all the directions then hit okay And after applying uh, the constraint the next thing is the loads we need to apply the loads So again, you can expand it and you can see if you want to turn on the gravity you want to apply the gravity force Right and then after this we need to apply the load So here you can see the load area you can click on it and then we have the structural loads L is a shortcut just click on it and now what do you want to do so here we have type that is a force right uh, you want pressure movement uh, bearing load so these are the different uh, loads available let us use the force and then let's say on this component and where do you want to apply it suppose that i want to apply it uh, in vertical direction vertically up so here i can just define the angle so right now this is uh, zero degree let's make it minus 90 uh or 180 degree uh this is the magnitude 600 okay i need the pounds and here we have the degree let's make it 180 not applied added the force from this area and then change the angle And the angle should be in uh, this is x axis along x axis. This is along y axis. Let's make it minus 90 and make it zero. Ninety degree, okay, that's fine. And here we have the unit for the force. You can define, let's say, LB force six hundred. again if you want to add it you can just click on this button and then you can specify it okay these are for the directions y-axis okay that's fine and after that after applying the force next as you can see uh, this is the assembly this is not a single component and in this assembly we have one two and uh, three components and now we need to define the contact set and this is important when you are performing performing the simulation study on the assembly so here you can see the contact set we have the contact option available and we have the automatic and manage contact so two options are there right so, so first i'm just going to apply the uh automatic contact you just need to click on it and then you need to define the tolerance uh detection uh contact detection tolerance so by default this is 0.10 mm if you want to change it you can uh, these components 
well that is fine the tolerance value just click on generate and when you are going to click generate it will take a moment and now the contact set has been generated and if you want to check it you can check it here you can see in the project uh, in the browser area we have the contacts you can click on the edit button and then you can see bonded contact set contact type is bonded and uh, penetration type is uh, symmetric so if you want to change it like you want to make it separation you can separation right and uh, let's make it offset bounded then okay and now if you want to apply like next we need to apply some uh, manual contacts for this assembly so for manual contacts here we have the next option that is manage contact so you can click on the manage contacts here we have the create contact set right uh, this is for the manage uh, we need to create the manual contacts well you can click on the uh, button that is manual contacts and now we need to define the primary body and the secondary body so here uh, if you want to check the components you can just expand it here and we have base color color and pin so first i'm going to select the pin as the primary component and uh, second component i'm going to select this color select the color right and then we need to define the faces so first face is going to be this one click on this to define the second face and then select this face as the second face and now contact type you can see here so now you can define it this is bonded separation sliding rough and offset bounded you can define all these options so let me define the offset bounded if you want to check the advanced options you can click on this button you can expand it and here you can define right i'm not going to define all these parameters for this as of now and here you can see the third uh, contact set has been added again i need to create one more for other side click on create set and then primary body is going to be the pin and secondary body is going to be the color and selection set again select the face and then selection set two now define this as the other face and same way i'm going to make it offset bounded okay and now we have these connections available so now in in case if you want to change it again you can change like uh, for uh, this one let me make it bounded bounded this one okay offset bounded let it be then okay in this way you can define the contact set and after defining the contact set next uh, next is if you uh, want to generate the mesh uh, for this component so here again from the browser area we have the mesh we can just click on this edit button or from the ribbon area we have this option that is model view and then we have the toggle mesh visibility here so you just need to click on this button The mesh has not been computed yet so just hit yes to compute the mesh and then just hang on it will take a while and then generate the mesh for you and if you want to change the uh, mesh size right so you can do that so here you can see in the browser area just click on edit when you click on edit here you can see we want the absolute size you can expand the advanced properties element order right so you can define all these parameters here average element size you can go to go to the absolute size and here you can define the size of the mesh and then hit ok and then again if you want to check the model view just click on the model view so these are the steps which we need to follow for uh, the static stress uh, analysis and most of the like uh, most of other simulation studies as well these these is uh, these are going to be our uh, like steps which we need to follow and then after doing this next we need to check it whether uh, like uh, the things which we have applied which we have defined is enough for this uh, simulation or not so to check it here we have the option pre check so just click on the pre check then it will uh, give you the message the study setup has all the information required right if there is uh, any, like uh, if uh, something is missing from this study it will uh, pop up here right 
and the, uh, after clicking on this button so it will guide you like that uh, you should uh, do this or that suppose uh, you have missed the constraints so it will uh, give you uh, the information that you need to define the constraint for the study and uh, accordingly you can define the constraints and later again you need to click on the pre-check and then if you're getting the okay button here that means you are good to go for the study that uh, now we can solve it so here you have the solve option so just click on solve now and when you click on solve it will take you to this dialog box where you can define you want to solve the study on cloud or locally so uh, you can define right accordingly so if you want to uh, solve multiple studies at a time you need to choose on cloud option right but in locally we can uh, solve one study at a time right and other thing is also uh, there that if you want to do some other type of uh, analysis like event simulation was there uh, generative study and optimi uh, shape optimization was there so for those studies uh, you need to do the on cloud we uh, like uh, we cannot solve uh, solve those studies on a local basis okay so you need to use on cloud option when you are doing other type of studies anyways so just hit locally and then click on solve now it will take some time to solve the study you can click on it and then it will take you to the dial uh, to this dialog box where you can see the procedure and the process you can expand it further where you can see preparing model generating contact contacts meshing and then solving so these are the processes and after that here you can see the result right and see this is really easy to do the analysis in uh, fusion 360 now after doing this in the legend area you can see right now this is the safety factor and you can just pick it and drag it see if you just want to focus into the particular areas next we have the stresses right and then uh, what which, uh, what type of stresses you want to check for one misses first principle third principle normal xy yy zz xy and then uh, we have displacements and if you want to check the animation uh, the software will also create the animation for you for this uh, simulation study so here you can see in the ribbon area we have the animate button so just click on animate and when you click on animate here you can see another dialog box is there where you can just click on animate you want to check one side one way or two way so two ways activated speed you can specify number of steps and steps so just click on play and i can see so this is happening uh, because of the load and uh, the context that we have defined here see it will include all the context sets and accordingly it will generate uh, the simulation and this is for uh, displacement you want to check it for stresses you can just click on stress and you can see the numbers are also increasing accordingly right and then we have uh, displacements similarly you can check for the reaction forces and uh, strain and then we have the contact pressure okay and another cool feature is there like if you want to check the stresses on any particular element on any area so for that here we have a inspect option and then we have the create point probe and you just need to move your cursor accordingly it will give you the stresses at the big point so this is the most affected area for this model as you can see and this area right and now you can see as of now well you can check the x distance y distance z distance here and then the contact pressure right now we are checking for the contact pressure megapascal and then you can check for the stresses so these are the stresses 9.177 megapascal you just need to have the knowledge of the material then and accordingly you can define whether our part is safe or not right and then hit okay next is suppose i need uh, to redefine the component refine the component here right so we have that flexibility available in the fusion 360 as of now you can see uh, for let's say for the safety factor the value the minimum value is 10.84 and the maximum value is 15 right and for stresses this is 19.09 max uh, megapascal maximum and minimum is 0 0.02485 megapascal so what i'm going to do now let us uh, redefine the component so 
finish the study first and then we are going to simplify with the help of this tool we are not going to uh, switch to the design and environment and do all the uh, like uh, whatever feature you want to add or remove from here so in instead of doing that we are just going to simplify the model here and it will not affect your model in the design it will just we are just uh, applying all the simplifications just to check the result in simulation environment right so just click on simplify so this is really easy to simplify the model here and then it will take you to the simplification environment where you can see so you can uh, new simulate model so these are the options available you can create new thing here you can uh, create extrusions like all the modeling mo most of the modeling tools are available extrude revolve sweep rib right and then uh, we have the simple simplifier surfaces like you want to remove any feature you want to remove any face replace with the primitives suppose i need to remove some features from this component so just click on the remove feature and then it will ask you to select the body from which you want to remove the component suppose i want to remove the component from base body so just select the base body and then it will give you the option like let's say select all so it will select all the fillets hole chamfer extrude revolve and other features which you can remove from the component but i don't want to remove everything i just need to remove the fillets as of now so just uh, uncheck the option that is select all then click on fillet now i just need to remove all these fillets from this component only and then just click on delete and as you click on delete you will see it will remove all the fillets right then close now i need to apply the fillet so i can use the press pull for that so here we have press pull tool now select the edges one and two now apply because i don't want it to remove that one uh, then hit ok so with help of press pull you can apply the fillet now we have just changed the model right then finish the simplifier and when you click on finish simplify see it you will automatically get the error message the warnings there out of date out of date because we have just updated the model that's why so in case if you want to do uh, this one in another study we can clone the existing study so right now we have the statics test 2 study one statics test and now suppose i need to create clone for this just right click on it and then it will give you option of clone study and now you will see another study has been created statics test 3 and you don't need to do anything because we have just created the clone of this so everything is already inside you can just check it load is there gravity is there all the connections we just need to simplify we just need to update the model here right so click on pre-check the study setup has all the information required first let me select it and then click on solve locally solve it and then just wait a moment so it will just take a while to perform all these steps and will give you the information now you can see the result the safety factor the values has been changed and even you can click on the compare button if you want to compare the multiple studies right you will see the result here now well we have just updated the model but anyway so here we have safety factor we have stresses so just click on the stress and see the result and same way you can just check the stresses here well this is the same model uh, we need to open the two files and then we need to update those finish the compare so here this is the stress these are the stresses which is 18.94 and 0 0.02457 megapascal now right and earlier it was different so this way you can simplify the model inside the uh, simulation environment again if you want to do more simplification simplify same way i can use the press pull tool and uh, i need to apply the fillet on these edges to select it and after selecting all these features you can just 
define the radius value and then hit OK. Finish the simplify and again you need to solve the study. Simple. And after solving it, you will observe the variation in the result in the report. So it's almost done. Yes. And now stresses. So you can see minimum and maximum. So stresses has been changed again. So accordingly, you can simplify the model and you can check the different results, the variations in your stresses and in different type of simulation, uh, different type of studies available in static stress. So displacement, reaction forces and strain. And uh, next one, uh, if you want to import any CAD file in Fusion 360, so let me tell you about that uh, here. It's really easy to import any other uh, file in Fusion 360. You just need to click on this button from file and then here we have the open option, right? So when you click on open, earlier open option was uh, not uh, there. Uh, you just need to use the new design option, but now they have added the new feature. So you can just click on the open and then here you can define like open from my computer or if you just want to open from this uh, project folder. So you can just click on open from my folder and there you can define uh, uh, data set. Yeah, so these are the inventor files, right? You can see Autodesk Inventor if you want to open this file. You can see this is all supported file, alias file, AutoCAD, DWG files, DXF file. So you can see the various standard formats, universal formats, which we can use with other softwares too. So you can we can just define from here, then hit open, and then it will just take a while to open the file. It will just uh, take a moment to open the file. It's complete. Just click on open now. And you will see the component there. It's really easy to import any component from other tools. So this is one option. And other option is from the data panel. You can click on the data panel and then you need to click on upload. And when you click on upload, again, it will take you to this dialog box where you can click on select file. And again, choose the file which you want to upload here. Right, suppose I need to upload this one or let me just select all control a select all then hit open now see but again it uh, here you need to click on upload so right now it's uploading see tuner i am it was the assembly so it will automatically detect that and upload the assembly model So these are the different methods by using which you can upload the components, other CAD format files in Fusion 360, and then, uh, well, it's complete. Upload, finish. Yeah, here you can see in the project browser, Tuner is there. Just double click on it to open the file. And then here you can see the full assembly. It will automatically detect the components. So you just need to select the assembly and the components and it will give you the assembly here. The only difference is that when you are importing the component from uh, like uh, from any other CAD software or other uh, extension file, you will see, uh, you will notice that we don't have the uh, history of the component, the timeline, the timeline is missing because uh, this component is not uh, created in Fusion 360, that, that's why. But in case if you want to capture the timeline for other operations which you are going to perform in this, student, uh, in this uh, component here, you can just select the assembly in the browser area, just right click on it, and uh, then yeah, 
select it right click and then here you will find the option to capture the history so texture map control here we have the capture design history and as you click on the capture design history you will see the timeline there at the bottom of the software you can expand it which will just show you the components nothing else you can you, can, you can't observe the operations like the extrude revolve and anything else so uh, this is all about uh, the brief of the simulation studies available in fusion 360 and how to simplify and import the components um, i hope all these things are clear to everyone thank you so much guys now next to you leela wonderful thank you so much um i know there's just so much more you could teach us however um, we do have limited time on these. We are going to do a question answer session in just a moment here. But before we do, we are going to go ahead and hear from Eliza. Eliza is our product manager, and she's going to introduce some promotions and webinar related courses. Thank you. Thank you, Leela. And Anil, thank you. Great, uh, you know, walk through today of Fusion 360. This is actually the very, very first time I have seen the Fusion 360, to be honest. So I have a question uh, for you, Anil. Uh, sometimes, yes, you know, uh, we, we are supposed to make learning paths and so on and so forth. And just for the benefit of the crowd, I know there are going to be very seasoned professionals in the crowd today, and there are going to be some beginners in the crowd today. So if somebody mm -hmm. is getting, you know, their, their hands dirty into Fusion 360, what would you tell them that they should go for before the Fusion 360? Like, you know, sometimes people say that, hey, if you want to learn Revit, go for AutoCAD first. What would you say for Fusion 360 as a product that people should actually prepare themselves for or prepare something, you know, uh, go for a different product first when they want to get into Fusion 360? Okay, so uh, if anybody wants to do the Fusion 360, I would say they should have the product knowledge, uh, the concept of the ideas, like uh, they should have the visualization like what they want to do because Fusion 360 is really intuitive in nature and uh, you can design anything in the software. You just need the visualization and the concept, the ideas, the innovative ideas, right? And uh, like prior to that, I would say if, if anybody has AutoCAD knowledge, that would be better because we have the basic uh, knowledge of the commands. So if we know what is uh, line, if we know uh, what is uh, extrude, if we know like uh, these basic things which are already there in the AutoCAD. So that would be really easy to understand the Fusion 360. If uh, like uh, uh, after Fusion 360, there is another software that is Inventor is also there. So if anybody has the knowledge of Inventor, because that is also the product design software. And uh, we have all the modules available in Inventor as well. So uh, we can do all the basics, like the fundamentals of Inventor. And after that, we can directly jump into the Fusion 360 and uh, we can have, we can explore the, it's, we can explore its, uh, capabilities and uh, we can do many more things in Fusion 360. That's amazing. And Anil, I know that you are also planning on speaking at the Autodesk University. I see you have a great fan following also. You have about 50 people that are recommending and uh, it's talking about using generative design to help optimize a shelf bracket. Um, yeah. do you want to you want to talk about that topic a little bit as to what is it that you you think that you want to do in Autodesk University? Yes, Eliza. So yes, I'm going to speak about uh, the generative design, which is there in Fusion 360. So generative design is uh, really, I would say, uh, it's a com combination of uh, artificial intelligence where you can have the multiple design, the design aids. So let let me just give you an example, right? So suppose uh, you want to have a design of a building in architectural building where you know that like uh, there, there is a guy who used to walk in the corridor and uh, you want to plan accordingly and uh, suppose there is uh, someone uh, who, who wants to use the washroom again and again so you want to plan his or her sheet accordingly so you just need to put all those information there in the fusion 360 so it will give you uh, with all the permutation and combinations and will give you the iterations like uh, not only one or two see uh, we are human and we can design like five designs 10 design for the building maximum 15 or 20 designs but software will come up with the idea of maybe thousand or uh, n number of designs so that is uh, up to you like with which design you want to continue with your uh, model 
so it's really a fantastic thing which is available is uh, available in the fusion 360 so obviously <laughs> we are going to uh, uh, do that and if anyone anyone wants to do it here in fusion 360 so they can just uh, contact obviously uh, you guys yeah of course of course definitely we have you on board in order to help people out one on one as well but guys uh, please go ahead and vote for Anil to speak at Autodesk University. He's going to be waiting for your vote. Now to talk about the promotions that we are doing. So I'm taking you to our website, which is www.netcomlearning.com. And once I take you to the website, in order to get to all of the trainings in Autodesk, uh, you know, you could just simply use the search box, enter Autodesk in there, and click on search and it's going to take you to my favorite page but before that uh you know if you want to look at the promotions that we are doing for autodesk we are doing a free two-hour autocad training now if you want to learn a little bit more about this training and this is on this training has also been designed by anil and when anil is not available then you know we have other instructors a thousand plus instructors who can do this training also so this training kind of talks about parametric behavior in non-parametric software and in this particular training you know you can build you can bring in your team and so on and so forth the training is completely free of cost uh, all you have to do is fill out this form for us and you must have about 10 to 15 people from your organization taking this training. And if you have that, we will be more than happy to conduct this training for you. Another thing that I can bring to you is actually the Autodesk Revit, uh, something to move away from Fusion 360 and AutoCAD. So in Revit 360, if I take you to our Autodesk page, come to talk about it, and if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're more than welcome to browse through our popular products, our popular courses, and now you know Autodesk has also come out with new certifications. So you'll be able to see all of those over here as well. But if you ask us, we're giving you an Autodesk Revit Essentials free e-learning. If you want to learn on demand this particular e-learning, it is built up of five different modules. So take a gander over here, come up on this page, fill up your information, share it with your friends. You're more than welcome to. And you know, you could start watching this uh, training as, as much as you want. Another thing is if you want to browse through all the courses as opposed to looking for them, I'm going to take you to my favorite page. My favorite page is where everything is listed in one single place. So if you come to our website and you come to the home screen, just put in Autodesk in the search box, click on the search button, and this is going to bring you to our Autodesk page. It's going to show you a plethora of courses, including the e-learnings that we have available. And you have all the pa different packages, the combo packages that we have, different products. You want to browse according to a product and all the certifications that Autodesk has to offer. So if you are a young professional or even a seasoned professional who wants to go for the professional uh, certification or the expert certification, or even as a beginner, go for the associate certification, you're more than welcome to take, uh, you know, uh, take a look over here, select the kind of certification you want, and you know it's also going to give you a learning pathway for that certification. So I don't want to take too much of your time, and I'm going to give this back over to Leela. Thank you, Leela, for giving me the time today. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, we are kind of low on time, so we're going to jump right into those questions and try to get through them as quickly. Our first question that we have for you today is, why should I use Fusion 360 for simulation? Okay, Leela. So, yeah, uh, it's really a good question. Uh, obviously, people ask because there are multiple softwares available in the market, like Kansas, uh, uh, that is uh, mainly for uh, uh, simulation. Yes, Fusion 360 is really good for uh, uh, simulation. The simulation tool like Fusion 360 are extremely capable as it was uh, it uses Autodesk Nastran solver uh, 
um, uh, like robust and trusted FEA tool originally developed uh, for NASA back in 1960s. So that's why that is the main reason. And other reasons are also there. Like we can say that uh, there is a cloud simulation, uh, which is uh, one of its kind, which is like uh, because Autodesk uh, introduced this cloud thing in uh, uh, Fusion 360 at the first time. After that, many other companies has like followed uh, this thing, but uh, this was the first uh, firstly available in Fusion 360. And uh, another one is the simplification tools which are available in Fusion 360. And other, uh, other I would say the ease of use. This is really user, uh, user friendly uh, uh, software and anyone can do that. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see. I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Let's see. What is the difference between shape optimization and uh, generative design? Okay, well, we have already uh, like uh, briefed about this, but uh, like both are based on the cloud studies in Fusion 360. Uh, but generative design will iterate based on the changes to the uh, stress loads on portions of the mesh. So the mesh will actually change form as the stresses uh, move around. Whereas uh, like shape optimization, optimization is just based on the load paths. So uh, the geometry will be made to confirm to uh, like initial load path, it will just uh, reform the geometry on which we are going to apply the loads. But in generative design, we will get the multiple options from which we can define like with which design we want to continue our design. So that is the main difference between shape optimization and uh, generative uh, design studies. Awesome, you answered that so quickly. Um, I think we can go ahead and take one more question. What is the difference between linear and nonlinear structural analysis? Uh, a linear analysis mainly require a linear elastic material and a small displacements. Uh, but while in case of nonlinear analysis, uh, it considers like we can say that the large displacements and uh, elastoplastic materials. Therefore, like the uh, superposition effect cannot be applied. Another important uh, difference is the stiffness matrix, which is available in the uh, nonlinearity, but not in the uh, linear uh, type of the analysis. Wonderful, thank you so much. Well, uh, with that, we are gonna have to go ahead and wrap up. Um, in addition to that, we do have a lot of informative webinars that are coming up. So please go to www.netcomlearning.com forward slash webinars forward slash to register for any of those. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. If you do come up with any additional questions, please feel free to send them to us at webinar at netcomlearning.com at any time. We hope you all found today's webinar to be very informative and we look forward to seeing you back here with us very soon. Also, please feel free to tell your friends and colleagues about our webinars and other courses. Once again, thank you everyone. Thank you Anil uh, for joining us and have a great day.